Welcome to CyberRoom Online CCNSP Training Module 9. In this module, we'll be learning about QoS or quality of service. So let's have a small introduction to QoS. Now, QoS or quality of service is required for an organization because bandwidth is finite. Now, being finite, some traffic can be susceptible to packet loss or even latency. QoS has the capability to regulate the selected packet flows in network. CyberMOS extends the QoS to a network, subnet, user, and even application, making it application quality of service and even user quality of service. So let's have a look at the terminologies of QoS. Now, in order to understand QoS, you have to first understand the classification of traffic. You have to understand the scheduler, priority queues, and forwarding class, and you have to also understand marking the packets and policing and shaping the traffic. So these are some terminologies associated with QoS in CyberRoom, which we'll be covering in the next few slides. Now CyberRoom OS recognizes packets in different classes. There are eight predefined classes in CyberRoom OS which map it to a priority queue. Now you can see you've got class 0 which is real time or offers highest priority of traffic. You've got a class 1 which is in a bit lower priority than class 0 which is which you can apply for business critical applications. And you've got class 2, 3, 4, 5 and finally class 6 is for bulky traffic which is of lower priority and class 7 is the least priority traffic which is for best effort. Now let's say for instance you assign class 0 priority or real-time priority to VOIP and then you've got a class 6 priority for HTTP when the two traffic VOIP and HTTP is contesting for bandwidth, class 0 or VoIP traffic will be taking high priority or will be having more priority over HTTP traffic which is going via class 6 priority. So that's how prioritization or classification of traffic is done in CyberRoom. Now we have got two types of bandwidth policies. One is the strict bandwidth policy and the other one was the committed bandwidth policy. In strict bandwidth policy, user would always get the specified bandwidth without any guarantee, which means if you're assigned 256 kbps to an, to an user, he will be somewhere getting around 256 kbps, but there is no guarantee to that. He might be getting less if some other traffic with higher priority is contesting for bandwidth. Whereas in committed bandwidth policy, user will always get the specified bandwidth which is guaranteed, plus you can also define a burstable bandwidth if available. So there are two parameters in committed bandwidth policy. I'll just write it down. So one is a guarantee and the other parameter is burstable. So I'll just write it as burst. Now, let's say I've specified 256 kbps as guaranteed and probably another 256 kbps as burstable. Now, in any case, he'll always be getting this 256 kbps of bandwidth, but if he needs more or he probably requires more bandwidth, he can always draw from the burstable pipe if only this 256 kbps is available at that point of time. So the total bandwidth allotted to the user is the sum of committed bandwidth value and the burstable limit. So the total bandwidth allotted to the user is 512 kbps. Now, you might be thinking at this point of time, when do I need more bandwidth? Now, a very good example would be probably you've started making a video conference or a video call with some of your users and you're getting 256 kbps of bandwidth. Now, you added three more users to that video conference call. That's when you'll be requiring more bandwidth and you'll be drawing up from this burstable limit of 256 kbps. But you'll be only getting it if at that point of time 256 kbps is available to be assigned to that particular user. So these are the two different bandwidth policies which CyberRoom offers you. Now let's have a look what is scheduling. Now on CyberRoom OS scheduler algorithm determines how often the queue is serviced. The scheduler selects next packet to dequeue based on the priority. And what are the algorithms that CyberRoom use? CyberRoom use Linux algorithms HSFC or hierarchical fair service curve 
and hierarchical token bucket. Now this is the job of a scheduler. So let's assume that you've got a, I'll just draw a raft diagram over here. So let's assume you've got a bandwidth pipe and you've got a uh, view IP traffic being processed, let's say with priority one, and then you have got uh, probably HTTP traffic with probably priority two, and then might be another set of view IP comes in with priority one. So after this view IP traffic is processed, this view IP traffic gradually moves towards this in this queue and the HTTP traffic moves towards in the queue. So this view IP package gets queued after this view IP and this HTTP gets dequeued in the queue. And that's the job of a scheduler. So this is how the packets are queued and dequeued. Now let's have a look at the QoS configuration in CyberOM. So you have to create a QoS policy. You can give it a name to the policy and then you can assign some parameters. Now QoS policy in CyberOM can be based on user firewall rule, web category or application and be very careful while you are creating a QoS policy because if you are creating a QoS policy based on web category for instance and you are trying to assign it to a user it's not going to work because you will not be getting that QoS policy while you try to assign it to a user. So if you want to assign a QoS policy to a user you have to create a QoS policy based on a user. So just be careful on that if you want to assign a QoS policy to an application or application category as we saw in our earlier slide in the application PPT. So you have to create a QoS based on an application and then you go ahead and apply it to an application. And then you've got the policy types as I discussed in the last slide which is strict and committed. And now you can implement it on either on total bandwidth, which is upload plus download. If you assign 256 kbps, for instance, that will be total of upload and download. Or else you can go with the individual option as well, which says individual upload. You have to specify a certain amount of bandwidth and individual download. You have to specify a certain amount of bandwidth. So that's the implementation. And finally comes to priority, which we discussed in the earlier slide. So you have to select the priority, whether you want very high priority, which is class zero, which is real time, or you want very less priority, which is seven. Now there is a total bandwidth parameter as well. So let's say I specify here 32, for instance, what is the amount of bandwidth that I'm actually assigning it. Now be very careful this is in capital K and capital B which means it's 32 into 8 equal to 256 kbps. So just be a very careful if you're assigning 1000 over here which is equivalent to 1 meg that becomes 8 meg. So be very careful with the m number because this value is in kilobytes. Let's have a look at the QoS configuration. So you can change the QoS settings from the web admin console. So how do you do that? You need to go to QoS and you need to go to settings. Now here are some settings which you, I'll explain it to you in this slide. The first one is the bandwidth maximum limit, which means you need to specify the maximum bandwidth limit in KB. So it's very important, it's kilo bytes and not kilobits. So when I say it's mentioned as 100, it's 800 kbps or kilobits per second. Now this bandwidth maximum limit, what you have to specify is if you have got two or three WAN links, you have to add all of them up and then you need to sum it up and then specify it, it over here. Now then there is a allocation behavior is of two types, normal or real time. So what is this allocation behavior? You need to select the bandwidth allocation behavior from the following options, either normal or real time. Now if the bandwidth behavior is normal, then priority will be applicable only for excess bandwidth, which means bandwidth remaining after guaranteed bandwidth allocation. However, if the bandwidth behavior is real time, then you need to select real time traffic, which is like QoS with priority zero, like VoIP may be pre given precedence over normal traffic. And then there are two types of guarantee, which is either lenient or enforced. You have to select enforced if you want to enforce bandwidth restriction on the traffic on which the bandwidth policy is not applied. But if you select lenient, you do not want to enforce bandwidth restriction on the traffic on which the bandwidth policy is not applied. 
it will only handle traffic on which QoS policy is applied. And then you have to come down to the default policy section. So what is this default policy? Now default policy will be applicable on the traffic which does not have any bandwidth policy applied. And there are two types of it, guaranteed and burstable. You need to select guaranteed if you want to specify bandwidth, which is the minimum guaranteed bandwidth that the user can use. When you select burstable, you specify the burstable bandwidth, which is the maximum bandwidth the user can use if available. And then finally, you have to come down here and select the priority, which means if you set the bandwidth priority, it can be set from one, which is highest, to seven, which is lowest, depending on the traffic, you require to be shipped. You can also alternately click on the show bandwidth usage icon or button over here and you can see the bandwidth usage. However, if you want to have a details of the settings over here, you have our knowledge base article which you can refer at the bottom of the slide. You can go to this article and you can get detailed explanation for these QoS settings and these QoS settings are very important. Now let's see how does CyberOM does congestion management and packet marking. Now CyberOM drops the packet when the queue becomes full. You remember my last diagram I showed you a pipe wherein the packets are getting queued like VOIP and HTTP. CyberOM will start dropping the packet if the queue becomes full. If any upstream or downstream device marks DSCP bits, CyberOM OS can maintain and alter those bits as well. So let's say your VoIP provider told you that, okay, I'm marking a graphic um, with this particular class of diff server DSCP, probably class 16 or bronze class. So you have to retain that. So CyberOM has the capability to retain those bits of marking. In case a packet is not marked with DSCP bits, CyberOM OS can mark the packet and send it to next hop or destination. In case there is an unmarked traffic coming to CyberOM and you want CyberOM to mark it with a specific class or packet marking, CyberOM can even do that. Now there is a small note at the bottom which is very important. QoS should not be confused with packet marking as they are separate functionalities of CyberOM operating system. Packet marking is different, prioritization is different. Packet marking is for marking a packet and priority is prioritizing a packet. I'll show you in the next slide wherein you can mark the packet. You need to go to the firewall rule and there at the bottom you have got an option DSCP marking which is alternately called diff serve marking. And here you can mark the packet with any of the class your provider wants it. Depending on your requirements you can mark the packet in CyberOM or else you can also retain those bits which is previously marked by some other device. Let's have a look at the implementation. So QoS policy can be applied to the user. So if you want to apply a QoS to a user you need to go to identity users and then go to the user and you can add a user or else click on the existing user and there at the bottom you have got an option for QoS. Now you assign it to that particular user. You can also assign the QoS policy to a group of users, to an existing group, or else you can create your own group and assign a QoS policy to that particular group of users. Now, there is a very important terminology in QoS. While you create it, there is a called a shared bandwidth or individual bandwidth. Now, you have to be very careful while you are selecting shared or individual. If you are creating a policy for a group, and let's say you've got 10 users in that group and currently all the 10 users are online at this point of time and you have selected individual 256 kbps then the total bandwidth becomes 2.5 meg for the entire group however probably don't want to do that you want like to have the same bandwidth shared among all the 10 users and that's when when you go to the QoS policy you select shared and once you select shared and you select probably 1 Mbps that 1 Mbps of bandwidth is shared among all the 10 users so just be a bit careful on that if you're selecting or assigning the QoS policy to your group so you need to be very careful on that particular parameter now you can also create and apply a QoS policy on a firewall rule so while you create the QoS policy you need to select it to be firewall rule and then you come down to the firewall rule and you've got the option to select the QoS policy in the firewall rule as well. 
this is a very good example would be when you've got a VoIP server and you want to assign a specific QoS policy to a VoIP server. You create a rule for the VoIP server, create a QoS policy based on the firewall rule and finally you assign it on the firewall rule. You can also do the same thing to apply QoS on application as well. So you need to go to the firewall rule, security policies and select the QoS policy based on application and then you come down in the application and assign it to the application category or to individual application over here. Now some people do get confused. I'll give you a sample scenario over here. Uh, let's say for instance on an individual user John, let's say on probably the administrator over here has assigned one Mbps of bandwidth to the user John or me. And there is a specific application, P2P application, wherein the administrator has restricted that to 256 kbps. So what will happen? How much bandwidth will I get if I am accessing that particular application? Now, if I'm accessing that particular application, I will be getting 256 kbps because that's a bandwidth restriction for that application. And if a lot of users are accessing the same application again, that same 256 kbps will be divided and I'll be getting that amount of bandwidth even though as an user I have got 1 mbps of traffic. So that's how the classification and prioritization is done in CyberRoom. So be careful on that even though the user might have 1 meg and there is a separate bandwidth policy for application or web category. The web category or the application bandwidth takes precedence over the user for that particular web category or application. Now you can also, as I was telling you, you can apply QoS on web category as well. So this time you have to create a QoS policy based on web category over here. And then you go to web category, edit the category and apply the QoS policy on the web category. So that brings us to the end of this presentation and we will be doing lab 24 now. So what the lab says we have to create a 1 Mbps QoS policy for a user. So let's do the labs now. So I'll remote into my lab infrastructure. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to go to QoS and I'll go to policy and here I'll be clicking on add and I'll be creating a QoS policy or I'll say name it as QoS test. Now you have to be very careful on which particular parameter you're going to apply the QS policy, whether you're going to apply it on the user, on the firewall rule, on the web categorization or on the application. As per the lab we are doing it on the user, so I'm going to apply it on the user. Now there are two more parameters strict and committed, so I'll be selecting it to strict and I'll leave it to the defaults. I'll have to select a priority, so let me select the priority to be real time. So I'll select it to be real time and I'm assuming it to be a uh, VoIP or you can also select it to be any kind of these lower levels as we discussed about the levels in the presentation depending on your requirement you can select it. So total bandwidth now the lab says it's 1 Mbps so I again tell you it's in kilobytes so you have to be very careful and it'll put it as 128 which gives 1 Mbps of and with policy and I'm going it as individual because this is what I'm planning to use it on a particular user not on a user group so I'm going it with individual and I'll click on OK now I've got my policy over here oh, let's see whether we have got it or not yes we've got it as QoS test now I'll go to identity and I'll go to user and I'll go to the user John and I'll apply the QoS policy here so I'll select the QoS test and I'll click on OK and here I've applied the QoS policy on the user John. So that brings us to the end of this lab. Let's continue with the presentation. And that also brings us to the end of this presentation. So thank you for attending the presentation and the next module which we'll be doing is network high availability.